to safely clear your weapon. You want to make sure you aim your weapon in a safe direction. First thing you do, take the magazine out of the weapon. Keep it away from the weapon. Show you here that there's actually a round still in the chamber. You have to remember to get that round out to fully clear your weapon. Pull it, clear it to the rear. Lock the slide back, visually inspect. There's no round in the chamber and there's no magazine in the gun. Your weapon has been cleared. When using the expandable baton, you have three basic kinds of strikes. You've got green strikes to the large muscle areas of the body. The back of the leg, the buttock, the upper arm, and of course the calf. You also have yellow strikes. Yellow strikes are going to be to any joint areas. The elbow, the wrist, the knee, front or back, uh, and possibly the shoulder. You have to always be careful of the shoulder because it's very close to a red area. The red areas are going to be the head, including the face, the neck, all the way down the spine, and the groin. Uh, give you an example of each strike. Uh, we'll start out with the green strike. Green strike, we're going to go with the thigh. So I want to keep my hand up. I want to be able to tell him to get back or to get away from me. So get back. Then we'd go to, obviously, the yellow area. If he's still coming at us, we need to use a joint group. Get back. It's going to be much more effective. You're actually going to a joint complex. And of course, the thing you only want to do when there's deadly force is going to be the red area. The red area is going to be, for this example, we'll go to the neck. We're obviously not going to do it as hard as we would do it for real. Get back. You've got to remember whenever using this, you have to use the appropriate use of force. I'm approaching a criminal. I'm going to handcuff. Go ahead and put your hands up on the wall, sir. Go ahead and spread your legs, sir. Stand your hands up on the wall, place your uh, head completely on the wall. You want to make sure you move in right here. So if he were to move this point, you can take that leg down. He's going down to the ground. All right, put your head back up on the wall. Then I'm going to command him to go ahead and put his hands behind his back, thumbs facing up. From that point, I'm going to grab these fingers, make sure I have some control on them. If he does want to get away, he can start to go, but it's going to take a second. At that point, I can transition to a primary restraint technique. Back up on the wall. Well, remember at this point, I want to have my handcuffs ready to go. From this point, I'm going to put, want to place both handcuffs on in a fairly quick manner. Go in here, still covering this, still covering this knee. Coming in, placing the first handcuff, tighten it a bit. Second handcuff on. From this point, he's in restraints. I want to make sure. And then from this point, I'm going to double lock his cuffs. Make sure I keep a hold of him. Get my handcuff key. Use the end of the handcuff key to double lock each cuff. This way remains the handcuffs will not tighten on his wrist. And that's the correct way to handcuff a criminal. The next thing we're going to be talking about is going to be hand-to-hand -hand techniques. The first one is the same side grab. So you come up, you want to make sure you grab the thumb against the fingers of your hand. Begin to, begin to twist to the outside while pushing down on the hand itself, pushing it towards the elbow. You want to push straight down, making sure that pressure pushes that person's down to the ground into a position where you have the advantage over them. Next is going to be the outside grab. This is going to get somebody into a position where you're actually going to be able to handcuff them, where you'll actually be taking their back. Come here, want to make sure I cross with this hand, grab at the base of the hand right here. Make sure I reinforce it with this hand and I'm pushing directly to my chest, pushing the person over, using their body weight against them to take them down to the ground. Make sure you have a good grip of their hand when you do this. You can take them all the way down to the ground and you've moved to a primary restraint technique for putting them into handcuffs.
Now we're going to tactically clear this next room. We're going to move up to the doorway, but make sure the muzzle of our weapon isn't going past it. We don't want to give any kind of target indicators. You need to make sure that the team is all prepared to go through the door. He's going to tap me on the shoulder when he's ready to go. When we go through this door, we want to make sure we get out of the fatal funnel, staying away from the door. I go to the point of least resistance, start panning around to one foot off of his muzzle while he's panning around to one foot off my muzzle. We've covered the entire room. Room's clear. 